Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for uh, Thursday, June 13th, 2019. All right, since the last update uh, yesterday, after the, shortly after the markets closed, uh, or later in the evening, but uh, still during the pre or after hours trading session in the stock market with a QQQ, SPY, all the equities trading, towards the end of that, uh, we had a swoon down in the futures, and uh, you can see that swoon down took us right to, I had that, uh, that level that's been on this chart for quite a while now, 2864, and that's ES. This is the, these are the S&P 500 mini futures. So again, the bigger picture is we've had the counter trend rally off the lows here. It was triggered by the breakout here with this little wedge pattern. Sharp move up. And then we broke this trend line recently in the futures. Back tested, put in a divergent high at that point. And we were stair stepping lower with that swoon down that hit 2860, about 2865. And uh, today was another consolidation day. We had some movement in the market. I'll get to that in a second. Um, and uh, I just wanted to show that the futures had kissed support and continued to just try to kind of trade around in this range sideways. So not a, not a lot to report today. Same story on NQ. NQ are the NASDAQ 100 futures. You know, they broke the the 60-minute uh, uptrend line recently, moved down. Uh, this is where I did the closing market wrap yesterday, and then they had a, that quick drop down, KISS support right there, 74.30, uh, and, uh, and then reversed and kind of floundered around today. So that's where we're at. Really can't extract much from this um, today's price action, but let me get to the uh, intraday charts, and I'll show you uh, what I'm looking at. Uh, this is QQQ. So we'll start here. Uh, I had mentioned uh, a couple scenarios here uh, where we had a uh, p possible bull flag. Well, they, we had bull flag continuation patterns. I mean, they were there at the close yesterday. So I said, uh, you know, I laid out a couple scenarios. I laid out three scenarios. And, uh, you know, first being, you know, my bear scenario where pretty much the highs from Tuesdays marked the, the end of this counter trend rally. And we're going to work our way down lower from here. Um, uh, my that was that is was and is still my preferred scenario and as long as we you know keep above below that level that'll that'll come into play uh, or that'll remain my preferred scenario I should say I had an alternative scenario that I could almost flip a coin on um, but it is my alternative which says that QQQ goes on to push up uh, make a marginal new high in other words take out Tuesday's high um, and then come up here to around that 186 level uh, resistance level and in doing so would put in uh, a divergent high negative divergence you know we had divergence here minor actually no we didn't have divergence there so as I said we'd put it we'd go up here that would then give us a negative divergence and set the stage for a, a bigger drop and it would look again something like this I'm drawing out how the indicators would look there uh, so that still remains my um, my alternative scenario with a preferred scenario of moving lower but again my convictions aren't high we're consolidating bulls and bears are duking it out here so let's just see what happens and then uh, finally I did say a scenario that I, I told you I'd be remiss not in pointing it out uh, I didn't it I didn't favor it I, I put pretty low odds on it happening and that would be a breakout of these uh, bull flag patterns on QQQ and SPY and remember we have very powerful patterns because that's a big old flagpole and as I said they take the uh, get the measured target for a bull flag continuation pattern you take the, the flagpole add it to the bottom of the flag uh, and that gives your measured target and that would clearly take the QQQ and spy out to new all-time highs right there now for that to happen and I did an update this morning on the site uh, and this is public content this is just general market analysis like these videos you can come into right side of the chart dot com uh, if you're you know not logged in any any the uh, you know, post without a, a lock icon you can come in and see that as public content so this was update this morning and really the same thing I said yesterday here's the you know my preferred scenario with the red arrows um, and uh, my alternative scenario with that marginal new high and at the time uh, I did this shortly after the open the bull flag had broken out so we had a very impulsive breakout this morning uh, so that would by all accounts uh, remember if you look at just the gap right here the gap up in the morning nothing's more impulsive than a gap a gap is just like a breakout that would occur intraday and keep going except you didn't have any trades there in that gap because you gapped up it's impulsive but what I had said in that post, and I and I believe I said yesterday, you know the you know a trait of a bull flag continuation pattern is once the flag breaks, well you have an impulsive move leading up to the formation of the flag, then you consolidate or flag on decreased volume, declining volume, uh, and then you break out 
on above average volume. There's a bigger volume bar right there, but the, you should continue to move up impulsively. Now, it doesn't mean you can't have a couple red candles in between. You certainly had a few here, but for the most part, it's a unidirectional, nearly equal impulsive move to the upside. And so once again, uh, like the smaller flags before, uh, at least on the 60 minute chart, that, that was foiled. Uh, so just as that had the potential to start playing out as such, and it was foiled. So I'm not going to take too much away. I'm just saying it, it, it sort of negates or takes away from that potential bull flag pattern playing out so far because that just doesn't mesh well. We consolidated the entire day after that initial green candle. We still close green, uh, but in fact, uh, that's a, sort of a suspicious green close. I and mean, we'll take it for what it's worth. I'm not trying to twist this the way I want, but over half the gains today of that 0.61% gain in QQQ occurred in just the last few minutes. You know, I've told you I'm a tape reader, I watch the charts. This is a daily chart here. And uh, again, 0.61% gain. So that means from the close right here to where we close today, if you look at my pop-up tool to the pop-up box to the left, that tells you that 0.61 gain. But if you see, and this is a one minute chart, each of these are one minute candles. So just right here in the last few minutes of trading today, Boom, 0.36. Uh, that's a you know unnatural ramp. There was you know some big fund or uh, some big short covering rally, uh, big institution. Somebody was or you know a few in, a few big players were making some really big bets, and when you get moves like that right into the close, they really don't they they kind of skew things. It's not the natural buying that occurred all day. Again, we still would have closed up, so I'm not going to knock today as bearish. I'm just pointing out that those bull flag patterns really didn't, they had the potential to play out uh, with an impulsive move up today and a continued rally after the gap, but they didn't. So at the end of the day, uh, let's just say it's it's a stalemate. We remain right above, and remember, this is a level from way back here, looking at this level. Um, you know, 180, uh, 183 was a level, you know, 182, 93, call it 183. Uh, where uh, at that point I started to exit longs and, and scale into shorts up to but not above that point. Uh, if we go back down below it, especially if we take out the, the bottom of the flags recently in the gap there, say around 181 or so, uh, I will start to uh, or consider adding shorts. So we'll, we'll see where things go. And as I said, uh, I will not add up to uh, this 186 level. This is my kind of no-go zone right here. Uh, in between 183 and 186 but um, and after that if we start to if we hit that level and start to move above it that's where I just scale out and say okay something else is going on here We're probably gonna like I said we can pop a marginal new high so it doesn't completely take away uh, from the bearish case but it just doesn't mesh well uh, with it so at that point that's kinda where I step back and just focus on the other things I'm trading like agricultural commodities gold uh, individual stocks things like that um, you know remember that uh, I do these videos and I cover the indexes in the in the in the uh, you know public content videos on the YouTube channel um, but that's just a small component of what's out there money a lot more money has been made lately in, in things like uh, ag commodities and and uh, treasury bonds in the last few months and gold and things like that so that's that let's just follow up and see what happens tomorrow because you can't can't really extract too much information when the markets close like this a consolidation day here's spy same story you know beautiful little or potentially beautiful little bull flag patterns right there pop today with an impulsive breakout but there were no follow-through buyers and so instead the entire day we just locked into a sideways trading range so uh, take from it uh, what you will, but uh, you can't say it's bullish or bearish. You know, if you have to give one or the one or the other the win, you give it to the bulls because we've rallied so far, and all we've done is consolidated uh, within an uptrend. So uh, we haven't moved down. The bears haven't been able to take it down. So if we break above the recent consolidation range, uh, and that's what you need after an extended run, and that's what I said back here. I had no problem. I felt very comfortable, and still do with the shorts. Little less now. I have to say it. Why? Because we consolidated back here, shorting up to that 289 level on SPY, which was my max bounce target. I was fine because I figured at 
best, just based on the technicals, based on everything else, at best the market would consolidate before moving higher. It wasn't going to go up 6 7% or whatever it went up, 5 and continue to do that uh, in a straight line from there. We were very overbought near term. And uh, again, a lot of things, these chart patterns played out to their measured targets. And more importantly, they hit my uppermost targets uh, and, and slightly exceeded that. So that's where we're at. And, uh, you know, to try to put in words, if, you know, if right now, if I, let's say I had no positions, I was in cash, I just got back from, you know, traveling around the world. Uh, at this point in time, based on my views on the longer term charts, I would probably still add some short exposure, but not much here. Uh, I'd take a small, maybe 20% or so waiting, or just wait until see, uh, wait for a sign of reversal right here. Now I already have what I have, so I'll sit tight on that. Um, not adding until and unless the uh, charts start to, you know, confirm that we are moving lower. And again, that would be a break over here under the recent lows, under those flag patterns. That's about 287.80 ish on on spy right there. And it's also a you know minor minor support level, nothing big, but it also drops us down below this recent consolidation range right here. Uh, yes, that could be a bigger flag, but nah, it's a little little too big, getting a little too big there. I'll have to look at it on a four hour chart. Let's do that real quick. Yeah, sometimes you get 60 minute charts get a little busy, you can zoom out, see a little clearer. So again, this this was that was the fit. That was the fit for your bull flag pattern. Uh, there's your move. There's uh, you know a couple candles again, you know not not uh, not any impulsive follow through. Still the potential if they want to move it up tomorrow. Again, like I said, I'm not going to knock anything today. I'm just going to keep my options open now. But uh, if they can't continue to you know move this thing up and away from this recent consolidation range, uh, that's going to be bearish. So there's your bullish scenario, bearish scenario. But remember, I have my my alt scenario right now just has a marginal new high marginally above Tuesday's highs followed by a reversal that doesn't change anything in the you know in the technicals anything much more than that does uh, and it does really chip away at the bearish case as I said you know one thing I'm watching too and we're trading we have an official trade right now on uh, one of the VIX uh, instruments uh, VIX track and ETNs this is the VIX the uh, CBOE volatility index now you can't trade the VIX you can't buy the VIX sell the VIX go long the VIX you can go along derivatives of the VIX those are options on the VIX or actually let's start out the futures on the VIX there's various futures contracts just like the stock market go out and you know different various length uh, terms and time lengths and time uh, you can do the options on the futures or you can buy a VIX track in ETN and it doesn't track the VIX directly. I get this question all the time. Why is the VIX up blah 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 today yet my, my TVIX or whatever VXX is down today? Um, because the VIX ETNs are all different some are leveraged, some aren't leveraged, but they all invest into different futures. Some are short, some roll the short-term futures contracts on the VIX, some roll the medium or intermediate, and some roll the longer-term futures. What you're looking at here we refer to as the spot VIX, and that spot VIX is not a tradable instrument. So you're going to get a little difference in, in, in all those ETNs, but here's, here's where we're at right now. We have uh, this 1573 level, pretty big support. I've gone over this recently. In fact, I'm going to show you a post from uh, just a couple week or two ago where I had, uh, you know, had us coming down to this level if the uh, if the market, um, once we got the rally that I was looking for. And we did, and we hit it. Uh, so I'm going to point that level out. It's it's price support. There's, uh, you can see a lot of, a lot of reactions along the level. That's why I have that line there. I've had it there for quite a while. Uh, pretty pretty important level and now we've also have an uptrend line as well coming into play so it's kind of where I'm viewing this and I did a video today covering various trend indicators for um, for members and trend indicators that I use uh, the majority of which are still for the short to intermediate term trend indicators they're still bearish but only by a hair they flipped bearish recently and um, they're poised to either they're, they're they're really testing that level right now where if we go up much more in the market we start flipping the majority of those index trend indicators at least again short term I covered long term indicators many of which are still bullish but the shorter term ones 
uh, the majority are bearish. And that kind of plays into my analysis here where there's really not a lot of upside. If we start, the market goes up much higher, 3 4% or more where we're at, we're going to flip a lot of trend indicators to bullish uh, that aren't already. Uh, and we're also going to, we'll, VIX will break down, it'll break support there. But I still favor, you know, the scenario I had back here uh, where, where we reverse. And uh, you can see the VIX is in an uptrend. And uh, and more importantly, we put in a big divergent low, just like the market put in a divergent high. And that's what I trade on the VIX. I look for these divergent lows. We had one back here in 2017. Uh, had a few pops. Sometimes you just pop, 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 and then finally, boom, there it is. Divergent low, you get a few pops, a little shot across the bow on the market, and then boom, boom. And of course, you know, if you can get a divergent high, you don't always get on the VIX. That marks the top. And uh, so that that's that's the point I'm trying to make is we're at a pretty important support level. Let's look at that real quick. So here's the charts. This was back on what May 31st. So that's almost two weeks ago. At the time, we were in a downtrend in the market, and so I shared my thoughts on the VIX, saying that if uh, you know if we were to melt down or anything, VIX was probably going to spike right here to. Uh, get that chart and get that little close button away uh, up to 2558 or so because we were at resistance on the VIX um, but uh, you know at the time I was cautioned about a rally in the market and said if we're gonna rally next week which we did that's when the rally started you're gonna come down here to that 1573 level and then reverse uh, so that's uh, what I just showed you on the VIX that's where we're at so this this kind of comes into it factors into my analysis on both the stock market uh, as well as the VIX so it's kind of like I said, from here, if we rally much more, we start to rally, a lot of things kind of break down that bearish case uh, that uh, the recent rally that we've had was simply a counter trend rally with another big leg down to come. It doesn't completely eliminate it. Look, the VIX is still well off its, uh, you know, this is a very key support zone down here and we're still well above that level. But if we break support, again, this is just one component, you're going to come down it probably means that the market's rallying and then fear is coming out of the market and maybe we come all the way back down here at about that 11 12 dollar uh, support zone there's also levels in between i'll just give you one now about 14 46 that would be actually be the first stop i think if that trend line breaks okay six more charts to look at let's just go back to the now let's zoom out we haven't uh, covered this one yet daily chart and then as per, per request from a member on the site uh, who asked me to update a chart of Amazon as long, uh, along with some of the FANG stocks. I'll do that. I usually stick to just general broad market analysis, just the index. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll cover the FANG stocks real quick because it, it plays into where, where QQQ and, of course, SPY as well, where they're going. But a couple things to note on the daily chart here, you know, you know besides the fact we're flirting with this uh, this this uh, resistance level here, about that 183-ish level again on, on uh, QQQ, uh, I'd like to use, uh, you know, a, a pretty pretty tried and true trend indicator is the uh, signal line or the 9 EMA on the PPO. Now f for those not familiar, a PPO is a very close cousin to the MACD. Most most people that dabble into technical analysis, that's one of the more popular indicators out there. I prefer the PPO uh, for various reasons I won't get into now. It works almost identical. If you don't have a PPO, you can, uh, price percent oscillator, you can put up a MACD on your chart and it'll be very similar. And so what I like to do is that 9 EMA um, the uh, white line here, it does a pretty darn good job of defining the trend and simply when it's above or below the zero line. So the zero line is the dotted line right there in the middle. Crosses down below, the trend is bearish, uh, the PPO itself. Now, I, why do I use the 9 EMA? Because it's the last of the two to cross. It's the slower, it's the moving average for the PPO line. And so, therefore, you get less whipsaw signals. So if you look at how it's done, just this is two years right here. We're going back two years. And as you can see, it told you this entire time up to this point, the trend was bullish. And it was. We had a couple, We had a correction there, but guess what? Uh, it didn't flip to right here, and then we had a little whipsaw signal. So as I always say, and I did a trend indicator video today, not a single trend or any type of indicator in technical analysis works all the time in every market. There's nothing with 100% effectiveness, at least not that I've ever found. If you guys have something that with zero whipsaw signals or false signals, let me know. I'd love to use it. So anyways, you had a little whipsaw here where it crossed below. And uh, to be honest, the trend at that point was still bearish when it crossed down. And then it stayed down there and then finally went back above. So for the most part, you can see going back again two years came into there it was well above that level so that's more than more than two years 
it, it captured the bulk of the uh, uptrends telling you that that was what the primary trend was and likewise right here boom at this point I'm going to put that line straight up there to show you where it caught. It told you that the trend had now flipped to bearish. And unlike this one where there was only a little more downside, that got you in for the bulk of the move down. Now, we were already short because we shorted up here when XLK and QQQ broke down. Um, but that was just a confirming signal, and it didn't cross back above until right here shortly after uh, everything bottom so it does a pretty good job now where am I going with this okay so since then for the majority of the rally so far up until recently it was bullish but it gave us a sell signal right about here come up to that level actually right about on the kickback rally or so and that crossed down into bearish territory and it is still very much the bearish territory so there it is there's a sell signal by this one trend indicator and by the way I didn't cover this in the video earlier for members I cover this a lot in these videos it's, it wasn't a part of the trend indicators I use today were on a, on a different format but anyways that's just something that goes and factors in that uh, you know we have a little kickback rally here just as we had kickback rallies here but at that point the trend indicator this trend indicator remained clearly bearish below the zero line and uh, you know, each time we had a rally of, you know, comparable to this rally, as I went over before, these two were uh, about right about where this one was in percentage terms. And it looked like things were getting good, but nope, the market took another took another jog down. So that's, that's a possibility. Um, and then also the PPO line, that itself sometimes will get rejected on a back test at the zero level. So those are things to watch on the daily chart. Now let's roll into the big fang stocks and we'll wrap this up. Okay, Mr. Softy here, Microsoft, uh, as I mentioned, uh, was it Tuesday, put in a bearish engulfing candlestick, uh, followed through with a red candle yesterday, but hit support around 140, 130.46. As I said, until that level goes, it's not uh, really probably worth shorting because you have a stock that broke out to new all-time highs, and so far that breakout has stuck because uh, the breakout was above this level these reactions here and multiple candles there so uh, right now um, there aren't any sell signals but there would be if Microsoft soon moves down below 130.46 and ideally as I said I want to see it stay below the top of this bearish engulfing candle uh, right there so right now just kinda wait and see stuff on Microsoft um, Apple Apple has run up to right about almost exactly to where I figured it would a few uh, weeks back. We put Apple on as a swing trade right here on this bullish falling wedge. Uh, Apple was added as a long trade on the site when it broke out I, somewhere about here. Uh, that was just before the market bottomed. I saw the bottom coming. We had an, a long on Intel as well, uh, which we held on to and closed that out successfully uh, the other day. This one hit our stop for a 2% uh, loss. Um, that actually, I think the stop was at 175 something, and then I showed you where I would have put it. I actually set it a little tighter than I had meant to. Either way, 2% loss. We had that capitulation washout move in the market, and that took Apple down there. But the chart still played out. So basically, this was a wedge breakout, came back in the wedge briefly, on a, uh, and then shot right back up. And again, at the time this trade was laid out in advance, uh, one. This was a final target here, 195.92. I had my levels up that I was targeting. I always set my sell limit orders on long slightly below the area I expect a reversal because I don't want to miss a fill. Sometimes if all eyes are seeing the same thing I'm seeing, if it's a well-defined level, the sellers can step in early. Short sellers might short early, longs might exit. Uh, so you can see we hit that 196 level, uh, which was my uppermost target. Uh, the very high on it was uh, Apple hit a high of 196.79, uh, so 79 cents on a $200 security. I think we're talking less than half a percent there, or, you know, four tenths of one percent or so uh, overshot, which is virtually you know an exact hit. So what's the point there? Uh, not to say oh, okay that's where Apple would have gone, but that is again where just like QQQ and SPY hit and just slightly overshot my, my uppermost targets and they're back on them right now. It just plays into the case that this is exactly, you know, about as high as I figured the rally would go. And that's why I have m multiple price targets. You know, you can take targets along the way if you're not, you know, if you don't think it's going to go that way. Or we could have reversed at any of these targets. So uh, there's many reasons multiple targets are listed. Some traders will try to actively game those levels and I'll do it a lot too. What does that mean? 
you know, cover when your target's hit, and then recycle in on a pullback for the next swing up. You know, to sidestep the uh, the reactions at those levels. Uh, but uh, and so not only has Apple put in hit that target, it has done so with negative divergence that we have in place right now. Um, I can see the possibility. And I did an update on the site today for this as well. I can see the possibility, and it would mesh perfectly with that alternative scenario that I have for QQQ and SPY, that Apple comes on in, uh, maybe hits my former second target level, pull back to support, makes a marginal new high, and in doing so would just put in uh, a nice nice clean diversion with diverge, uh, divergence with a little more separation. So you get sometimes uh, you get the separation, the lines, usually you do like that. Like we had a divergent high right here. And you know, we had a divergent high here. So that's what happens. Sometimes the first divergent high plays out for a little correction, but when you continue to push up, just like the stock market did on the daily chart in QQQ. Uh, it's that's, that extended divergence finally plays played out here for a, a nice move down. And so now we're looking on a smaller time frame, uh, smaller divergences. But if it's a counter trend rally, that's all you need to turn it around. So uh, that is still my preferred scenario, whether we have a marginal new high, slightly take out my 196 target, you know, by a percent or two, and then reverse. Um, but I'm still leaning towards that as of now. Okay, I'll dig a little deeper into Amazon because that was the request from the member on the site, uh, primarily on Amazon. This is a weekly chart. I'm not going to go over the weekly and all those FANG stocks right now. I've covered those before. I'll do maybe a more in-depth analysis later for members. But um, uh, this is it. You know, you look, wash, rinse, repeat stuff. See all these these little these marks here? These are your divergent highs right there. You have one there, one there. Uh, one here, you actually had uh, PPO, not RSI, but PPO divergence right here. And you get these these corrections, 32%, 14, uh, 31. And I said, you know, at the time it was predicted because we had a very beautiful clean rising wedge. And here's here's what I see on Amazon when I look at this chart. I see these corrections within a larger uptrend, undoubtedly bull market. But I also see a, uh, an important trend line that many stocks and indexes have, including QQQ, SPY, everything else, off the uh, early 2015 lows. So that is a, a key longer term, more important trend line. Here we got very far away from that trend line. We overshot it, but we broke it. We hit it, we reacted off it at the you know initial reaction, which is common, then broke down and we've been back testing it since. So this is a broken trend line with Amazon just back testing. And sometimes you back test for a while and then before rolling over. So uh, based on everything here, uh, it looks like there's more downside to come that this was the initial thrust down. This is a counter trend rally. Amazon is still uh, comfortably off its all time highs. Uh, so at this point in time, uh, you can argue it either way. You can have to certainly say the longest term trend is still bullish, but from this point of view, you cannot say that this is, isn't is anything or wasn't anything more than a counter trend rally with more to come. When can you say that? Well, when we pop that high by quite a bit and put it, you know, clearly put it in the rearview mirror. Uh, PPO looks like it was poised to make a bearish cross. It's kind of flattening out here. Uh, you want to look for those crossovers as confirming buy or sell signals. Uh, there was a bullish cross, but of course we flattened out for a while, and that sometimes happens. So we, but it was a bullish. Finally, we had clear separation between the lines right about here, and the trend has been bullish since. So look for a bearish crossover on the weekly, a clean bearish crossover. When they pinch, stay away from trying to determine uh, determine too much. You want to see that clean separation, and uh, when you have that, then you can see there's bullish trend, bearish trend right here. Uh, so that's that's what I'm looking for on Amazon on the weekly chart, and we go to the daily chart. Uh, this was you know telegraphed in advance back last quarter. We had a just a beautiful bearish rising wedge pattern on Amazon right there, uh, and it, it aligned with everything else in the market. Tech, all things Fang, they were all set up the same way. Breakdown, back test, just like QQQ did. Boom, went down. These were my targets laid out in advance hit that third target almost perfectly, a little momentum overshoot that day with that one candle. And then we came full circle by, by full circle. I mean, we went from putting in a divergent high with a, what was it, uh, whatever that correction was, 20, 30 some percent drop to putting in a nice clean divergent low. And this is why the risk reward, you know, heading into those lows was not favorable at all. It was, it was skewed towards the long side. And then boom, once that divergence was confirmed, we had a, 
uh, a nice rally on Amazon. So I think once again we've come full circle now because now we had or had at the highs uh, and again why I'm viewing this as a counter trend balance we had the same pattern just a smaller wedge a bearish rising wedge nice clean trend line to look at not as not as well defined as this one I'll say that that one had more reactions when I say well defined I'm looking at uh, you know reactions off that level and the more reactions the more bounces off a trend line the better with that being said it is still a trend line we broke back tested moved down we've come back up to this resistance level here 1875.53 I've had this line on the chart for a while it was an important level back here uh, it was an important level right here we've consolidated quite a, quite a few reactions there and so here's my take right now on, on Amazon it's I can certainly see things going either way I, you guys know which way I lean right now but uh, let's just look at the charts uh, you know unbiased let's look at the pros and the cons negative we have the PPO down below the uh, zero line right there so that trend indicator is bearish for the first time since right here again across down remember it's the white line we're looking at sell signal right there uh, buy signal right there told you the trend was bullish this entire time up until this point told you the trend was bullish all the way here uh, so it does a pretty good job there's a whipsaw here's a whipsaw during a period of sideways choppy action uh, again I'm giving a little more faith that this won't be a whipsaw because it aligns with everything it aligns with this breakdown uh, back test initial leg down there and what appears to be a counter trend rally so that's my preferred scenario okay now let me give you the the bullish part of it I showed you again those flags that you know didn't today's action really didn't help the case on those bull flags on the indexes but um, you know we could still take off from there now we do have right here what looks to be a bullish pennant uh, on Amazon either way whether that's going to be what that pattern is and it's going to play out or not um, one thing I can tell you with certainty without any well may do this may do that is this is an area of consolidation we've had a strong run just like the market which is now consolidating and anytime you get an area of consolidation after a strong run uh, things can break either way and you usually get a pretty decent move uh, for example here was a you know a bull flag consolidation pattern right here on Amazon uh, if I can grab the right tool line tool and show you you know we had a strong move up put in a bull flag and so this one yeah there's your impulsive breakout right there broke out followed through a couple red candles and it was not as impulsive I will say that but it, it, it pretty much played out to about the measure target on the flag and I'll tell you one thing even though the move wasn't as equally as impulsive as the one up there it was pretty unidirectional and that's something else I look for in a, uh, a bull flag breakout by unidirectional I mean you have a couple red candles but we didn't really give back anything there were just days where you closed you know maybe flat or slightly down um, but you can see hardly any give back and so that's that's what you want to look for here so like I said I kind of guess where I'm going with this if I'm going to be wrong on this I might be pretty darn wrong where we could really rock it up there um, at this point in time I don't I'm not convinced enough to a abandon the shorts or b position long for it uh, if it starts to develop that all may change uh, first things first I'll have to you know scale out of some of the shorts and uh, believe me I have long positions too in, in, in various stocks but I'm talking the the tech heavy stuff the indexes uh, so there's my thoughts on it and if you want to keep it very simple uh, your next buy signal although it could prove to be a false break would be a break above the highs and uh, you know bearish if we break above the recent lows because again we're consolidating in this range that range could expand but that's what it is for Amazon now so I have Amazon at resistance uh, not oversold on the on the daily charts but getting it was a little stretched heading into that on the intraday charts but that's what consolidation does guys it works off overbought conditions during a strong move up or down um, oversold readings and counter trend bounces help to work off alleviate uh, uh, overbought or oversold conditions just like right here so that's kind of fits into my whole thing where we were too oversold at this point uh, not too oversold to continue lower but the odds were rapidly increasing for a counter trend bounce once you get oversold like that uh, especially when you quickly move down from overbought to oversold in one fell swoop like that usually you get a kickback rally so there's Amazon uh, Alphabet G O O G L this is kind of a busy chart 
Um, I might have a better board here. Let me check another one for you in a second. But uh, about 109.50 is a pretty pretty big level, I think. And we already hit it the other day. So uh, there's another stock. Again, this is the common theme that I've seen lately is a lot of these stocks bounce to about the upper end of where I figured they would bounce from this, you know, where, where the charts were set up technically. Uh, the other thing here, you know, it might sound crazy to you guys, but, you know, I usually, when I have a target, uh, a well-defined level and a stock gets close to it it's almost like gravity or a black hole or it'll draw it in not like a magnet and that's that's a big support zone on alphabet and we reverse just shy of it so that to me feels like unfulfilled business it feels like alphabet needs to uh take another jog down now that it's bounced back to to resistance and come in and hit that level uh it's been a big level for years uh, right here you can see all the reactions it's like that level on Tesla you know I was highlighting that for a long time Tesla had a big big level on the weekly chart um, you can see right here we had these two trading ranges and so that's what happens when a stock has one of those trading ranges and they're well defined um, you come down you hit the bottom you hit the bottom if you get close to it you usually hit the bottom and uh, then Tesla walked its way up within a new trading range and that's what I said you get a sell signal it would be come on a break and that's it we broke a couple weeks ago and then when we did I said this is where we're going to 180.16 uh, uh, I could probably dig that chart up for you and yep here it is uh, April 24th so that was uh, what just a month or so ago uh, saying Tesla is precariously perched at the bottom of this two and a half year trading range with today's earnings report likely to spark the next rally back to the top of the range or break out below it. Solid weekly close below would most likely be the catalyst for move down to the bottom of the 2014 to 27 trading range. Once we got that solid weekly close, like I just showed you, the rest was history. There's your solid weekly close. This candle right here, the week of uh, April 26th tried to kiss back that uh, the bottom of the level there uh, it's about uh, 22 77 perfect back test two weeks tried to get back in no sale got rejected uh, and that was it and that's all she wrote right there back down almost to the button so that that's technical analysis that's how it works why, why am I talking about Tesla again I talked it's not a fang stock because it goes back to this alphabet there's the same thing we're looking at the same thing here this is a weekly chart now so there's that big trading range um, this is a stock to me that was in a bull market and it has this looks like a topping pattern uh, it could be consolidation but I would put very good odds that uh, this will go the way of Tesla um, and probably before we even see another bounce back to the top now if it does go back to the top of the range that'd be another shorting up but you want to look for a solid weekly a break and or a solid weekly close ideally a weekly close below this level and uh, that opens the door for uh, a big move down why why am I favoring that instead of this being consolidation with a breakout to the upside and a, and a resumption of the bull market this is why these divergences that tell me that uh, alphabet will and oh and this is why as well so the negative divergences coupled with the fact here's our uh, primary uptrend line this trend line comes off 2011 very very well defined trend line they don't get much better than that breakdown back test rejection this tells me that's where that stocks going and if alphabet does that if I'm right on that I the only guarantee I'll give you the markets going down to there's no way alphabet one of the world's largest and top heavy components of the Nasdaq 100 is going down you know uh, 20 30 percent without the market going down with it so these are the things I look at they just take time to play out and these are weekly charts counter trend rallies as I've often said can be very powerful and uh, that's what I think we're in right now is a snapback rally all right finally last one of the fangs Facebook um, I don't have much to show you here I'm not crazy about this chart I haven't posted much on Facebook lately. Uh, we reversed a little shy of my 159 target uh, support, I should say. I haven't been really trading this one. And uh, weekly chart, there was a trend line broken that we're under, and we probably come back and visit this long-term trend line here. But there is support here about 170. So I don't have much of an opinion on Facebook. So let's just let's just wrap it up there uh, and leave it at that. Uh, potential bearish PPO crossover and oversold as well. Uh, so. Those are two things to look at, or overbought, I should say. All right, we'll wrap it up here. Long video, uh, but I covered a little bit more than usual. Hope you guys enjoyed it.